spring. Viewed from above in early spring, the oaks have a shifting, softened quality that gathers itself for green. Spaced at our feet, the bird calls rise at intervals, and the urgent, airy thump of wing beats punctuates complaint with escape. A rustle of wind moves up the hill towards us, recedes through the mix of trees behind us. All the senses awaken. I had thought my capacity for happiness was limited. It is good to have arrived here, even if a little late discovering the language I was exiled from, waking with the ground strewn with clouds and flowers and images with their names that are breaking cover, unafraid. Buddha's eyes are squinting at the sun across the field. He seems contented in his alcove and he smiles down as you strike away from him across his pool. The cameras caught the spray illuminated, falling back. Each drop your consequence, as with your wake attached, you pull away. For motion, you create a symmetry against the stillness resting in the wall. At the end, your white arm stretches to. I look out from the shadow of a tree. Your blonde hairs dark beneath the childish blue. Your parting cleaves a liquid paradox of line and surface as your movement shimmers, flickers, thrashes, undulates. Your eyes fixed on the sky and what's ahead. Your fingertip just skims the apex of my living geometry of deep content. Spotted leaves of some marsh orchids. I surface in the afternoon from somewhere far away and intimate. Walled in by lime trees offering green hearts that flicker at the glass in thousands. I am dulled still from the place we've met each other in. That mood for being served that comes with the confidence of both. And next to me, you're off 
remembering again with your flower book. Alert enough to hold in sight the shapes and hues of leaves and blossoms from our week. A difference in you surfaces a moment, clear as a roller from far out, I celebrate as it washes over me, your grasp of the particular, what you see and I pass over, needing to be shown what's at my feet and my own land interrupted in the sweep of clouds on my horizon. I will glimpse a plant's complexity, if that, and then it's gone. A fleeting stillness in the brush. Well, you are someone with an eye that gathers, that pursues retains, resolves, and is resolved by this. For all healing comes from this precise desire. I turn back to the leaves, moved by the thought that I might be seeing the particularity itself in another for the first time. And I try to remember nothing much. The sea campion asking for butterflies on the cliffs. Gastronomy, the grape kiss, its fleshy tang and sweet uplift, the marmalade kiss, the humble kiss of buttered toast on the tongue that prematurely led upstairs again, the white wine kiss and its inexplicable acceleration to cognac. But the kiss I remember most, with its golden, resonant succulence, is the roast parsnip kiss. In sickness, one. As we drive west through the winter solstice, the lights blink at us with their swift cold amber. You are drawn and shrunk with tiredness. It's cellular your enemy, your illness. It outnumbers you. 
You need to understand its grain and rhythm to observe, outwit and channel it. We hurtle on towards the valleys that have grown to cup so much of us. With stealth we'll stalk your shy, absconded health. Together we will ease you up from the cloudy riverbed that calls you back and walk. Two, chamber music. You set the resonance of cherished wood to mend the cell walls that have blown down in your puzzling interior storm. It can't be done with music that requires energy it won't give back, which is a metaphor for us. You find the room for a generosity of mind that overflows through what I see. Since, like a drowning man, I found it in me to insist on the surprising value I put on my life through you, who'll be my wife. The same place. The storm binges on after hours through darkened isobars. The tornado in Kensal Rise, which rises as it must. The wind is chest thumpingly high round the house on the hilltop where you live, bathed in leaves in their changing way. My love for the gales, deep-rooted, but this bracing howl's a test. The timbers strain, the house slips anchor, spins slowly at first. Then I hear you chuckle under the quilt, and I'm certain we belong within the same point on the map, in the same rumpled bed, on the same swirl of contour. 